It happens to all of us. We open chess.com, start a game, only to be hit with something like this. We might roll our eyes and laugh a little bit, but we've lost our queen on move four. If you want to cross 1500 on chess.com, it's so important that you not fall for any of these opening traps we're going to go over in this video today. This is 1g4, also known as the grab attack, and it seems like it should be really easy to refute, but you actually have to be kind of careful, because bishop g2 is a sort of killer move if you don't know how to handle it. So a lot of people take on g4, and we'll talk about how to do that safely, but what ends up happening is they will go c4, and if you're not careful, this can get really messy quickly after queen b3, threatening to take on b7, so the queen goes in to defend. This is an error because after takes, 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 you have so many threats going on. So you have the threat here, you have the threat here. It's actually very, very hard to defend from this position. So you go c6 to try to stop the threat here, threatening to take the queen and the rook. And it ends up getting very, very messy because now you have takes, check, king moves, takes the knight. If you take back with the rook, you can take with the queen. And this is just a lot better for white. So we're going to go over how to handle this. The most accurate move here in this position, so you just have a free pawn as black, you can go c6. And c6 is seems a little scary, but you're actually just fine if the queen decides to take. Just move your knight and you are fine. This queen is kind of incorrectly placed. You have counterplay. Your pawn structure is very nice. But we should go over what to do if instead they take on d5. So if they take on d5, you can go e takes d5. And now if they end up going queen takes b7, you're still a little bit better after the same move knight d7. And this is just a really simple way to stop it. You're going to be playing a real game of chess, but now you have the advantage. So the next one we're going to go over is the fried liver attack. And you may think you know the fried liver attack. But trust me, it was up to until 1400 and I still didn't know how to face the fried liver attack. It can be a little tricky. So basically it goes like, not g5. Basically it goes like e4, then we have e5, knight f3, knight c6. There are variations, but bishop c4 is pretty common. And then we go into a very typical knight f6 structure. And now we have knight g5. And this is a little bit tricky because let's say you try to kick the knight you're struggling with the move knight takes f7 and we have a fork here which is very unfortunate there are multiple ways to handle this first we'll go over the fun trappy way and after we'll go over the little bit more solid way to handle this but i actually really like this way of handling it after we have knight g5 we're just going to ignore the threat and go bishop c5 this is the tracks or counter attack we think we're hanging a fork but it actually gets a little tricky here after bishop takes f2 We'll go over some lines, but king takes f2, and now we have knight takes e4. There are a lot of different ways white can respond. A lot of people really don't want to put their king on e3, even though this is technically the best move, just because it's super tricky, and at lower levels, you can end up getting checkmated pretty easily. So let's say king goes f1. Now we have queen h4 here, and black has a pretty big advantage in this because there's so many threats. The queen's forced to try to trade here. And now we have kind of an insane move. Knight g3 check. Knight g3 check. Well, what happens if the queen takes? Aren't we just down material? No, now we have queen takes and everything's hanging. This just looks really good for us. So we'll go back and we'll see, okay, what happens if uh, pawn takes here? Pawn takes here, we can take again here. I recommend taking the white bishop with um, check instead of taking the rook even though taking the rook objectively is fine. So it's it's up to you, but this is just better eval-wise. So let's say they don't go king f1. Let's say they go something like king g1, which makes a little bit more sense. We have the same move, so it's really easy to remember. Queen h4. Queen h4, we have the same threat going on here. They're sort of probably going to go here. They can also go queen e2 but we have the same response no matter what. The whole idea is we're going to be targeting this bishop. And no matter what they respond, this is going to be the common response that we're going to give. Now, let's say they give the best response, which is actually not taking the bishop, but just going king f1. This may look like you're in trouble, but there are some ways to counter this that will end up giving you a good game. You go queen e7. They most likely will take the rook. What you're going to go is bishop b6. And you know what? This isn't even that bad for black here because 
A, this knight really is going to have a hard time defending itself. It's probably going to waste some moves going back. And this king is so far out in the open, especially for lower level games. I'd say I'd give black much better chances here just because it's going to be really hard to defend the king. So you're doing fine. One thing that's really important to note in this position is that the bishop can also take in that case. We're honestly just going to go king f8, and even though we've lost our ability to castle, we still have a lot of counterplay. We can end up pushing the h-pawn. It's not that bad, but let's say you don't want to deal with any of that, and you just want a super simple, easy response. So instead of bishop c5, we have the option to go d5. d5 here. Pawn's going to take, thinking that they're going to maybe threaten our knight, have this huge advantage, but we have this really interesting move here, which is knight a5, and... Really, there's very few places this bishop can go without being taken. If the bishop retreats, we're simply going to push away the knight and we're doing fine. A lot of times they will end up checking. But we have c6. After takes, takes, our knight is covering everything. They are again pretty much forced to retreat. They can go into some sack lines, but most of the time we're going to see them retreat, in which case we can just push the knight super simple h6. And this, this is a lot easier then the tracks are, I think it's a little bit less fun, but it's simple for my friends who just want to avoid all of that. This is a bit of a lesser known trap, but I've seen it before and I think you should too, because a lot of the themes in it are pretty common. So we're going to end up with a typical e4, e5, knight here, knight c6, very standard responses after uh, bishop c4, which is one of the most common responses. We're going to see the really interesting move of knight d4 and as white this can be kind of concerning if you don't know it so a knight might try to take the free pawn this is actually a huge error because of queen g5 and queen g5 seems like such a dumb move you're like okay what happens if knight takes f7 because it seems like right now we're just losing a piece right off the bat but now we have queen takes g2 queen takes g2 so there are, there are several different responses, but obviously it looks like you don't want to lose your rook. Rook f1. But now we have a queen takes e4, and this is just really bad. This is really bad because the only way to stop the mate is to give up your queen. If we go bishop here, what's going to happen? We have mate in one with this really annoying trick, and the bishop can't take back because we have it pinned. So what should white do? I recommend not entering into this super complicated knight e5 line. Simply take the knight. Pawn's going to take, and this pawn's a bit of a liability. You can just castle, go into any theory if you know some. And then after knight f6, we can go rook e1. And white's in a slightly better position here. Black doesn't have a lot of development. His pawn's a weakness. It's just a very simple, easy way to avoid all of these traps. So this is for my Caro players out there. And sorry if you hear some crinkling. Uh, my cat is going a little crazy right now. So we're going to end up with our normal Caro structure. Knight c3 is a typical response. I mean, we see d4 a lot more, but this is something to be careful of, my Caro players, if you end up seeing knight c3. So after we go into, they're going to make the really weird move of queen e2. And now you have to be immediately on alert. After takes, knight takes, knight to d7 is a very common theme in the Karakon. So if you're a Karakon player, please don't autopilot this because you're going to get hit with the knight d6. The knight d6. And this is actually very, very simple to avoid. We can go over that one pretty quickly. I honestly wouldn't even take e4 here. You can just go, you can just go d4. You can just go d4 and you're going to send the knight back to d1 or b1. The knight can go to b4, but it's going to end up getting kind of complicated for white. So most of the time they'll retreat. And now you are the one with the advantage. This is a trap in the Scandinavian. This is a trap in the Scandies. So we have our typical Scandi structure. Queen takes, and now queen a5. This is all very typical theory, but do not go autopilot if you're white here, because it gets a little tricky. Bishop g4. Bishop g4, again, very typical. Knight f6, d3. Scandi's known as a trappy opening for a reason. Again, it's very easy for white to go on autopilot here because it seems super typical. And now we have castle's queen side, which is a very common idea and always very aggressive. Very aggressive. After h3, here's where we have a crazy move, h5. So you might be like, I'm probably not going to get here if I'm playing against a Scandi, but this is actually a very common scheme theme in a lot of different Scandi variations. So it's important to know this, even if 
they don't follow the exact moves. So after h5, this is a fishing bull trap, takes, takes, the knight's under attack, the knight's under the attack, but it's actually very bad to move <laughs> the knight to e1, which is something you'll see a lot, because now it's mate in six, we have queen h5, and you, you have to sack all your pieces to avoid this, and once they go f4, a desperate attempt to make the king a little hole of escaping, we can just push, we can do several things, we can push here, but one thing that uh, I have seen before is bishop c5, and it gets super duper complicated here. There are so many different things that can happen. And another option here, I think, is just to push here. Push here, but it's a little bit more complicated because they can just sack more of their pieces, maybe even get their rook out. Either way, you do not want to be in this position as white. So how do you counter this? How do you counter this? Instead of taking, and sometimes taking is right, but here it's just going to end up being a really big pain for you, so I recommend you do the move knight g5, knight g5, which might seem a little odd, but after something like, I don't know, knight e5, here, sorry, knight e5 here, trying to still have this theme of taking and then having this open file, you're just gonna go f4, don't even give them any of that, and this is so much better for white because the knight's forced to retreat, the knight's forced to retreat, and now you can take knight f7 here. So all of a sudden it's gone really, really tricky. And if you're struggling to remember that, just know, be very careful before you take any sort of bishop knight idea here. Just be very, very careful because it's almost never worth it to open up this file in this kind of position. This, y'all, is one of my favorite traps. It's so much fun. I highly recommend you try it out because the opening's kind of rare. And even if we don't get into the trap, it still can be a little alarming for white to see this. So this is called the Albin Counter Gambit. Such a fun gambit. And it's actually not that unsound. So after takes, which is the best move for white, you're going to go d4, d4. And a lot of times they will go e3, trying to challenge this pawn, get this super strong center. But this is a mistake because now we have bishop b4, which doesn't seem scary, but it gets tricky quick. So they're going to try to challenge the bishop, again, get the strong center, take away all your attackers, leave black without development, but we have options. We have d takes e3. After bishop takes b4, this is when it gets tricky, we have this check, and this check is actually kind of alarming, because if king takes, we get the queen, and we're doing great. So a lot of times we will see king e2 to try to save their queen, and now this is where it gets fun. We promote to a knight. We take and promote to a knight here. And no matter what you do, this just gets very, very scary quick because rook takes and now we have bishop g4. And either way, you're going to be winning the queen and you've pretty much won this game. White can resign here. So as white, how do you stop all of this? So there are several ways to respond, but I want to teach you the least amount of theory possible. I highly recommend just go a3. It really stops all of these ideas in its track. And after some common uh, black ideas to try to get development, take advantage of this pawn, you can now go e3 should you choose. You can go knight f3, but there aren't any traps to worry about now that we have this diagonal closed off. This one is a special place in my heart because I am a Scotch Gambit player, so we're going to enter the typical Scotch Gambit, and then we're going to go bishop c4, which is kind of a rare move but we do see it at times, so it's important to know if you're playing as black here. So now we have c3 after takes. We're just going to take on f7. And no matter how black responds here, this still has a little bit of advantage for white, and it has a shock factor, which is super important. Here we're going to go queen d5. We can choose to win back the bishop here, but there's other also options with like queen h5 check. After here, now we take c5, and we've completely weakened the structure. This pawn's hanging. So no matter what, in that previous position, black is doing a little dubious. They cannot castle. Even though the eval's pretty much even, white's going to regain their material, and black's left not being able to castle. It's just kind of a hard position to play. I wouldn't want to enter it as black, so here's something you can do instead. Instead, we can end up going knight f6 here. After e5, we're going to push d5, and no matter what, just it's important to know if they take here, it's better for us. If they on passant, we can take back. Again, better for us. 
So we see bishop b5 a lot, which is probably the best move here. And now we have knight e4, knight e4, and after knight takes bishop d7, we are actually just doing fine here. We're doing fine. As much as I dislike the French, I want you all to succeed, so I'm going to teach you this trap. It's important to know if you are deciding to play the French. So we have a very typical French structure here. This is all super typical. Knight f3, queen b6 here to add more pressure. Now we have bishop d3, bishop d3 after takes, c takes. Now if knight takes, this can be really, really bad for black. And this is important to know. Also, if you want to play against the French, I recommend this line. This is fun. So knight takes. If knight takes, the queen cannot take because what happens if queen takes? Now we have bishop b5 and you're about to lose a queen. So if you're a French player, what do you do instead? So this line actually isn't bad for black. It's very typical. Queen b6, but it's very, very important that after takes, takes, instead we go bishop d7. Bishop d7, do not take this back. It is a trap. Do not take it back. After something like, I don't know, bishop e2, or there's a lot of different things they can do here, you just continue as normal, go into your front structure. You do not have to worry about this anymore. And you can continue targeting this pawn, but just be very careful of that trap. Honestly, we could have a whole video on the Budapest Gambit. It's just such a trappy opening, but we're going to go over just a few traps in it just to make sure you don't get caught by surprise. So there are a bunch of different moves white can make. Let's say they go knight d2. Now we have e5, very typical. And then the knight g4 that marks the Budapest Gambit. So no matter what we do here, it gets a little tricky. So this is just a huge mistake. This is a huge mistake for white here because now we have the very, very funny move, knight e3. And this really only works if the knight's on d2, but we'll go over different move twos and see some traps that they can do. What happens if they take? Now we have mate. Other very, very common move twos include c4. c4, and you can actually still play this after c4. It's very fun. We go e5, d takes, knight g4. Again, we're going to see this a lot. Sometimes you'll also see knight e4 as white here. You'll also see knight e4. So you have to be careful if you're playing white and you see either knight e4 or knight g4. Anyway, then we're going to go, you're going to want to defend the pawn, right? because uh, we're attacking it. So a very clear way to defend this pawn is to go knight f3. So now we're gonna continue on with the plan. This is very common in any Budapest Gambit. d6, takes, takes. A lot of times they really wanna kick this knight, but it's not the right move. They're gonna go h3, and this is a huge mistake as white. If you go h3, it's the game's pretty much over. Then you've got knight takes. If the king takes, right? If the king takes f2, which is actually the best move here, you're just going to end up losing to this here. This here is just very, very bad. This here is very bad after king e1 to try to defend this queen, which is going to be taken. Now we have bishop f2. Takes and takes. Here are some other traps to be vaguely aware of if you're playing as white here. After c4, we have the same kind of structure, knight g4. If the bishop decides to defend instead of the knight, we still have traps you have to be aware of. So knight c6 is a move you can do because now d6 doesn't make a lot of sense, but there are still traps you are not in the clear here. After bishop b4, knight goes to defend because you're going to want to keep attackers on this under-defended pawn. Sorry, you're going to want to keep defenders on this under-attacked, over-attacked pawn. Ah, words. Okay, you get what I mean. Queen e7, we're putting more pressure on this pawn. If you try to kick the bishop, now a knight takes. If you take here... This is a huge error because I wonder if you guys can see it. Pause, take a look. All right, yeah, we have knight d3, and this is mate. There is no way to take. Just very unfortunate for white. There are several ways to approach this position, but if you just want to be careful, you can do something like this or anything with similar themes. Bishop f4, right now they do not have this check, so you don't have to worry about that. Knight takes e5, knight takes, d takes. And now, instead of taking back right away, you can just take here. And after king takes, you actually have a pretty good position. You can take here on e5. The king can't castle. Neither of you guys are really developed, but you're slightly more developed. I would much rather have white here. 